Hello again, Roman is here. We continue to dive into crowdsourcing approach. Quality control is particularly important in crowdsourcing. You can have a perfectly designed project with impeccable instructions and a user-friendly interface, but it might still produce useless data if it's not checked properly. Designing quality control is a multi-stage process. It starts with thinking through the task's logic and ends with smart aggregation of your results. The first step involves breaking down the task, putting together good instructions and designing a clear and usable interface. We discussed how to deal with these challenges in previous videos. The next important step is selecting performers based on certain essential characteristics. Explore the input filters offered by the platform itself. The most popular ones include the country and city where the user lives, their operating system, preferred languages, their gender and age. If you think that any of these filters will give you a better subset of performers, use them. Now that we have selected our potential performers, they need to be trained. In our context, Training involves a set of tasks with comments that performers will see when they give an incorrect answer. What makes an effective training set? It should demonstrate all the guidelines from the instructions, even the simplest ones. You can use several examples for more complex guidelines. Explain why a given answer is correct or even better, reference a particular section of the instruction. This will give participants an extra reason to reread and absorb the instructions rather than clicking through the training as quickly as possible. After training the candidates, you need to confirm they understand the project guidelines. This is where tests come in. Tests confirm that performers have understood the instructions and their training. When a project is launched, the quality of the performance can be monitored from various perspectives. It is important to track external signs of suspicious or simply careless behavior. Requesters are often concerned that they might be dealing with a bot or not a real person. Use capture as a basic tool to distinguish actual people from bots. But performers can get tired of monotonous work and lose concentration, so don't punish them for one or two mistakes when doing a capture. Monitor how fast the task is done to check for fraud. Are there any performers who finish tasks in 5 seconds, for example? Create custom checks using JavaScript that cover possible actions in your interface. Are the tasks that involve watching a video but performers submit a response without actually having watched it? How can you make sure that performers who pass all the behavior checks are actually making good quality assessments and providing good data labels? There are several ways you can do this. Overlap. Are there any performers whose opinion consistently contradict those of other participants? A control task. Are the performers who give incorrect answers to the simplest questions? And assignment review. If a task involves creative work, does it fit the guidelines? Control tasks, sometimes they are also called golden sets, are tasks with known answers. The control task is presented to the performer as a normal task without letting them know there is a special check involved. By adding control tasks to your project, you can work out the percentage of correct control responses for the project and the percentage of correct responses for individual performers. This will be crucial for aggregation. There are several ways to prepare a control task. They can be created manually. You can use a paid contractor or a group of trusted participants working outside the crowdsourcing platform, for example, your content managers. Or the second way is, control tasks can be taken from assignments that were evaluated using an overlap check and received a clear-cut assessment. Or, 
you can run a special pool to collect control tasks with a large overlap, for example 10, to be certain of their quality. In certain cases, you can generate control tasks automatically. For example, if a project involves comparing web documents, you can generate screenshots containing an error. It will be obvious that in these cases, the answer to the task should be error in document. Of course, projects don't always allow for control tasks to be generated in this way. If you use control tasks, it is essential that you monitor their quality. After all, your project metrics are built on them. If they are configured incorrectly, performers could lose their earnings and the labels you get will be incorrect. Here are some tips for keeping your control tasks in order. First, they must be indistinguishable from other assignments. If you generate them in an artificial way and they stand out, performers will notice them. Second, be sure to keep them up to date. Content can change and an assessment made a year ago may no longer be correct. Ideally, you should use control tasks for no more than a few months. When you get rid of old control tasks, you must add new ones. If your collection of control tasks becomes too small, users will begin to recognize them and pay special attention only to them. Next, check for suspicious control tasks. If performers are consistently giving the wrong answer on a particular control task, there might be something wrong with it. And perhaps our most important tip, your control tasks must be representative of your general task flow. If you make control tasks for only the simplest or most complicated aspects of your assessment, you will end up with artificially depressed or inflated quality indicators. For the same reason, control tasks should show all types of responses found in a given task, not just one type. All these checks and tests allow us to measure the quality of individual users. If you monitor suspicious actions, you can set up a counter for, let's say, how many times a user has closed a task too fast. Control tasks show approximate scale. These measures can be set up as a user's attribute and used to monitor the quality of collected data and labels. And after you have collected your data, you can use smart response aggregation algorithms to check reliability. We will have a video dedicated to this topic. In our next video, we'll look at how to deal with the collected answers. See you there!